Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 80 of Buds and Blue Jays, your place for all things related to the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Jesse Burrell, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Riley McConnell. And Riley, on our last two episodes of our show, we went through the entire Toronto Blue Jays roster, starting with our position players, and then we went to our pitchers. We gave our thoughts on what would happen with these players this season. How good can they be if they have a down season? How bad could it be? And what our expectations are for all of them. And today, we're going down to the minor league system. We're turning our attention to the prospects, Riley, and every single World Series winning team has one or two guys come up from the minor leagues and make major contributions to the big league club. So we're going to go through some of the top names here and see who could those guys be? Who could be these household names that become Toronto Blue Jays in the near future? But before we get into that, guys, remember our show is free and available on all platforms. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you're listening to us in podcast land, please leave us a five-star review. It is the best way to help the show grow. But with that being said, Riley, what's up? How are you? Jesse doing really, really well in this early day in February. Yeah. Prospects are fun. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about prospects a lot on our show and um, guys that maybe are for sure things, guys that are, uh, you know, more than a stone throw, as they say, guys that are kind of uh, diamond in the rough and make their way through from being a seventh or eighth round pick. You know, baseball is a game uh, played that has a lot of different diverse guys in it. And whether mm -hmm. you're a first round pick or a 40th round pick, I mean, you have a shot to crack a big league club at some point in your career. It's a lot to do with work ethic. If you put your time in in the minors and hey, who mm -hmm. knows, by the time you get to age 26, 27, you could be making your big league debut. You. Um, as far as the Blue Jays farm system goes, I would be lying to you if I told you that we have probably one of the best farm systems in baseball. Sure, that's yes. just not, that's just not, you know, it's just not what we're looking like now. You could argue three or four years ago, we possibly did have a top three farm system, but that isn't like that anymore. We have gone out and acquired big pieces in exchange for some of our better blue chip guys um, from the Toronto Blue Jays farm system. And I mean, you know, look at the guys that we've acquired through that, you know, uh, Matt Chapman, Brios, those are some pretty big names. Mm -hmm. but, um, I still rank us with a lot of guys, I'll say B minus C plus type prospects. Okay, a lot of sure. middle of the road guys, a lot of guys that can still make an impact, uh, maybe not right this second on the team, but still a lot of good organizational depth as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and yeah, had a good look at the top 50 Jays, saw some pretty good names. Some mm -hmm. already have made, um, you know, put in some major league time, which is good to see. And a lot of guys are still, you know, late teenagers. They're still kids and have a long way to go to and crack in the, the MLB club someday. Riley, I love prospects because you know me, if you've listened to the show, you you know, I love players with upside. And when you're looking at these prospects, all I see is just oozing upside from all these players. So I'm very excited to get into talk about these guys here. But first, Riley, I want to talk about the state of our farm system here, because you kind of mentioned the Blue Jays have traded away a lot of their top guys. Like we traded Gunnar Hoagland, who was our top pitching prospect. We traded older guys like Austin Martin, Simmons, Woods Richardson, Jordan's Groshans, you know. Alec Manoa, Alejandro Kirk, Bo Bichette are all with the big league club. We just traded Gabriel Moreno, who was our top prospect. And do you remember at the trade deadline last year, Riley, when we were doing our trade deadline episode and we thought, why aren't the Blue Jays going more to get more trades? And some of the rival scouts were saying stuff like the Blue Jays have their top prospects, like Ricky Tiedemann, uh, Gabriel Moreno at the time. And they have a lot of lower end talents, which is some guys we're going to talk about here. But the middle tier of prospects was something that the Blue Jays were really missing on and something they haven't they haven't really had, you know, those guys with that could be sneaky good, but aren't well known names. Right. And so because of that, Riley, I think a lot of the major sports outlets have us kind of ranked in the bottom third in terms of farm system in baseball. Like Bleacher Report, for example, has us 26 in baseball, bottom five farm system. Um, the Athletics seems to like us a little better. They have us up at 17th. And a website called prospects1500.com has us at 21st in the best farm system, Riley. Do you think this is a problem that the Blue Jays farm system is rated so low? Or do you think it's a matter of, hey, we trade our guys and we made the big league club better? What do you think? So I, first of all, obviously the thing is, I mean, is you want to make primarily your big league club as good as it can be. The idea obviously in baseball is to win um, the commissioner's trophy, to win a pennant, to win a world series. Um, and, to, and for that to happen, you know, via trades, 
you're going to have to give up some big guys. I mean, I don't see it as a problem right now. This is 2023. We haven't played our even our first spring training game yet. Yeah. Um, but if this, if if we go f- fast forward four or five years into the future, and we see it could potentially be a problem i don't even think in five years this could be a problem because of the middle of the road guys guys that will perhaps be the fifth starter in rotation or you know a platoon outfielder or a backup infielder things like that i mean i would put us right around you know the bottom third of the league i think it's kind of you know maybe a little bit distasteful to put us 25 or lower but i think the one that had us ranked 21 i think that's a fair comparison i don't mm-hmm. believe that that we have the, I, I don't think that there is such bad thing uh, or is it, there is such a thing like, you know, as a terrible farm system, we actually looking through the list 25 to 50, I believe we are, you know, fairly strong as far as the bottom end meat okay. of our, of our prospect pool. Yes. We might not have the bigger flashier names that we did, you know, two, three, four years ago, but there's still a lot of guys that could one day make an impact Um in the in the major leagues i mean it's pretty evident you see you will see you listen and see some of the guys we'll talk about in our top five and um, we'll mention a couple of the um the lower end guys but yeah i i mean yeah of course it could sink us but it's not going to be for a long time and the way we've drafted and signed internationally i mean it's we've done a tremendous job uh the blue jays Mm -hmm. scouts Mm -hmm. have done i mean i don't know what the numbers are to correspond with what the jays have done but out of our top 50 products Twenty four of them are international signings. I think that number is absolutely bonkers. First of all, like that's just insane. You like, I mean, usually there's 40 rounds in the MLB draft and you, you're signing 24 guys out of the top 50. I mean, that's, that's going down and bravo to the Toronto Blue Jays scouting organization for that. But yeah, it's not going to sink us right now, but um, yeah, obviously we'd love to be a top five farm system, but I believe that going into 2023, we're a top five major league club. So yes, I will take, yes. you know, tit for tat. I mean, you can't have both possibly, Jesse. So I'm good with where we're sitting right now. See, the thing is, the Blue Jays, when Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro took over in the mid-2015 season, they talked about they wanted both. They wanted to build this core, right? And they've done that. They built the core of Alec Manoa, Bo Bichette, uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., brought them up. But they wanted to have waves of prospect be able to follow them. So when, you know, those guys aren't performing, they have another group. They, you know, waves, not windows is what they've always talked about, right? And I don't think they're kind of into that, too. And I think it has shown because they, aside from Alec Manoa, they have really struggled to develop a very good pitching prospect. That's why they They've kind of had to throw money at Jose Brios, at Chris Bassett, at Yusei Kikuchi in order to really stabilize this rotation and make it work. But I think it's worked so far. And I think we're going to, you know, we'll tend to see if we can get one of these starting pitchers, which is one of the first two names on these lists to really blossom and join this rotation. It could go a long way in mount making the Toronto Blue Jays World Series champions in 2023. But Riley, with that being said, want to just jump right into the names here without further ado. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's why that's why our listeners are here. That's why mm-hmm. we're doing the show. I mean, we've talked about our big league club. It's time to reflect on, you know, the, the, the guys who will be there one day playing Major League Baseball and hopefully for the Toronto Blue Jays with the names we're about to say. All right. Well, the Blue Jays have one, according to MLB, MLB Pipeline, top 100 prospect in baseball. And we talked about him lots last year. He is going to be the talk of spring training, Riley. And I'm sure if you're a Jays fan, you already know a lot about him. That is left-handed pitcher Ricky Tiedemann. He was a third round pick in 2021. He stands six foot four, 220 pounds. He posted a 217 ERA in 2022 with 117 strikeouts across only 78 and a third innings pitch. He ended his season at double A New Hampshire as just a 20 year old Riley. This guy soared through the minor league system. He started the season throwing only about 93, 94 from the left side, but was throwing up to 96 by season's end as his body got more mature and he got physically stronger. And Riley, I don't know if you've watched video of Ricky Tiedemann pitch, but it's very interesting because he's a left lefty, but he comes from kind of like a low arm slot, right? And so typically when you see those low arm slot lefties, you think kind of like Tim Meza, right? Like a good sinker slider guy who can do stuff like that. But what Ricky Tiedemann does really well is his changeup. And it's very rare to see a guy throw a changeup from that low arm slot, but it is probably his best pitch, Riley. It um, Hitters hit 153 against it in 2022, and it had a ton of whiffs, especially to right-handed hitters. The slider has a way to go, but it has shown some promising signs and he just needs to learn how to repeat his delivery more. And 
I've heard some prospect people say, Riley, like Ricky Tiedemann could be as good as like Shane McClanahan is for the Rays. And we know how good he is. A lot of people have Ricky Tiedemann pegged to be a top of the rotation starter as quickly as this year, Riley. So what are your thoughts on our best prospect, Ricky Tiedemann? I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that Ricky Tiedemann um, could easily start in the big leagues, you know, as soon as tomorrow. I mean, he definitely is that type of player. But the problem is, Jesse, I really don't want him anywhere near a a big league mound right now. I mean, I still want his confidence built. This is like you said, Jesse, this is a 20 year old kid who has absolutely dominated single A ball and is now going to get I, what I hope to be a very good sample size in, in New Hampshire and double A ball. And I mean, they, they, when they say the sky is the ceiling, I mean, absolutely for this kid. I mean, Ricky Tiedemann is going to do good things. When you increase your velocity three or more miles an hour over the course of a season, that's huge. <laughs> I mean, he's a big bodied guy. Talk, talking about a big guy who throws a good change up left hander to boot and coming out from you know, not an over the top arm slot, but you know, more of your three quarter arm slot. I mean, yeah, there's some deception in there. Hopefully he can hide his pitch as well. Hopefully he can lo- can locate that change up, get a lot of swings and miss on the fastball. And if he does develop that slider, whoa. I mean, yeah, you talked out. about his, his batting averages against right-handed pitchers. I mean, he could absolutely just devour left-handed bats if he can develop his slider. I mean, Ricky Tiedemann could go places in in baseball. And um, listen, I think that he is could possibly be MLB ready as soon as, like I said, tomorrow. There's no doubt about it that he's going to be a big game guy. But I want to see his confidence built a little bit more. And in my opinion, unless we're in big trouble or he is, I mean, got to be lights out and he's got to see some games, um, some big games, some maybe throw some complete games or no hit seven inning ball. <laughs> um, like, I mean, yeah, there's, uh, listen, I want him up in the major leagues too. I just don't want, don't want anything to go wrong. You risk injury. You risk, you know, the chance of his confidence being shattered there. I mean, but yeah, absolutely looking forward to him when he does come up and play with the Jays. So here's where things are going to stand right now. Ricky Tiedemann did get an invite to the Blue Jays in spring training, right? So he, we are going to see him pitch for the Blue Jays this spring. And I think he's going to be one of the biggest storylines we watch here. Riley, I wanted to flash you back two years ago when Alec Manoa was our number one pitching prospect in all of baseball. We threw him in to start two – well, he started a few games in spring training, but two I remember in particular. He went in to New York to face a New York Yankees lineup full of regular hitters, including Aaron Judge. Manoa dominated. I don't remember the exact line, but I'm pretty sure it was like five innings, one hit allowed. Two weeks later, Alec Manoa started again against the Yankees. He gave up, I think, just one run, but he gave he went six innings and was dominant again against the Yankees lineup full of major league ready hitters. He was the buzz of spring training. There were people, I was probably one of them saying, Alec Manoa needs to be on the big league roster as soon as he starts the year. He didn't. He went down to Buffalo. And he dominated in AAA Buffalo. He, for about the six weeks he was there, Alec Manoa was putting up stud-like numbers. And then by the end of May, We called up Alec Manoa and look what he's done in the big leagues ever since. I think there is a similar path here for Ricky Tiedemann. If he comes out into spring and he dominates, there is a spot, especially because right now, Riley, our number five starter is Yusei Kikuchi or Mitch White. And we've talked about like, they're on thin ice as it is, right? So if Ricky Tiedemann is down and say he starts in Buffalo and he is dominating, well, Mitch White and Yusei Kikuchi are stinking up the place. There is going to be a large pull to get Ricky Tiedemann on this roster to help the Blue Jays, especially if we're losing games early in the year too, right? Like if we're struggling and it's a pitching that's causing it, we're going to be screaming for Ricky Tiedemann to come up and join this team. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping that would be if something really went wrong. Um, And yeah, we would definitely use him there. I mean, we're trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink to try and win a World Series. Let's be real here. And that would be a time to call up Ricky Tiedemann. I, I 100% agree with you. I mean, my, my plan and my hope and my expectation, Jesse, is that out of Kikuchi and White, one of them should be able to hold down a spot in the rotation. You'd hope so. you hope um, so. And, and – to even like it's gonna protect Tiedemann too. I mean, if he if he comes up, something has gone wrong either on the injury front or the performance front. But yeah, if, but if he does come up and shows like you know that he can pitch like an Alec Manoa, then yeah, he's going to pretty much be a part of the club right after that, just like Alec Manoa was. Yeah, hundred percent. And like, hey, look. I I love upside, but I think I see your point here, right? Like we know how good Ricky Tiedemann can be, right? So I think we want to make sure he reaches that potential, right? Like 
you could argue the Jays have kind of ruined Nate Pearson a little bit, right? Because he was once our former top pitching prospect. And like, there was talk Nate Pearson could have been Justin Verlander. Now, I think that ship has sailed, is not going to happen. But Ricky Tiedemann could be special, right? And I just don't think we want to ruin that is kind of the point you're trying to make here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we don't want I don't want to ruin a guy. We have a chance to basically we have a chance to create two homegrown drafted guys with Tiedemann and Manoa to be the aces and carry this team a long way for for a long time, man. And I would love to see that. I know a lot of Jays fans would, too. All right. Well, Ricky Tiedemann is rated number two for left handed pitching prospects in all of baseball. He's the only Blue Jay on the top 100. As of now, I think the Jays are going to have some more as we get closer to the regular season or into the midseason prospect ranks as a lot of their top guys are really young, including this guy, Riley, who is number two on our prospect list. And that is our first round pick just this past year. It is Brandon Barriera. He's a left handed pitcher. He's six foot two, 180 pounds, still incredibly young. And here are the scouting grades that they gave him on the uh, 2080 scale coming out of the draft. Fastball gets a 50. 55 slider gets a 55 changeup gets a 55 and control gets a 55 so guess what his overall is riley well he's a 55 guy <laughs> and i would say that the potential is still um you know very much could be i mean he's another left-handed pitcher another kind of tiedemann guy maybe not with mm -hmm. as much upside but um i like the size and the stature and um, yeah, I, I, when we made this draft pick, I was super happy for us, man, because I feel like he fell in that draft. He did. So he was actually MLB Pipeline's 15th ranked prospect in the draft, and the Jays were able to get him at 23. And after we got him, I remember doing an interview, and here's what he said coming out of that. He says, like, looking at those 22 teams before me, they're going to regret this. I'm going to become the best pitcher in Major League Baseball. And Riley, these are the kind of things Alec Manoa was saying back when he was a prospect. So you got to kind of love this. This is one of those attitude guys. And, you know, pitching is hard in the Major Leagues. Like, yes, you have to have the stuff. But if you have the mindset that you're going to go out there and you're going to be great, it's going to be really good. And it seems like Brandon Barriera, not only does he have the, the skills, right, from the pitches and stuff, he also seems to have the mindset to go out there and dominate. And I think I really like that in a young prospect. So mind over matter for sure. I mean, listen, when you're picked 23rd, it's a very bold statement to say that 22 teams will regret this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're ranked number one or number two and you fall to fifth, I mean, that's that's a good st – like, you can say stuff. I when, I when he said this, I didn't feel embarrassed for him or anything like that. I just thought that it was a very bold take. Even if you do fall seven or eight spots, I mean – Hey, man, you have a lot of good tools that make you a good pitcher. And I'm someone who loves confidence. I will I will make a good comp with with um, with Alec Manoa. I don't think he will be as good as him, but another complimentary left handed pitcher. I mean, two left handed pitchers ranked one, two in our farm system. I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I do love the confidence. But now he's we now it's kind of the character clause sets in like when you when you come out and say that as kind of your first line as a major league player sure, yeah you really got to back that up and i hope he does got again he's got a long way to go i mean we'll be talking about him and we'll see him go hopefully more up than down on mlb pipeline i mean i don't know why this guy isn't a top 50 prospect right now in baseball i feel like he is a very toolsy guy mm -hmm. who will eventually i think by years end, there's a good chance he's in the top 50 i really do but i really and because he's not pitching in the major leagues right now or won't be for another two years so to, i just i really hope he backs up his 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 word with some good play because i mean there's a lot to look forward to with this kid as well he's an interesting guy too he's um he's not on the top 50 list just because he is so young right and we got to see what he looks like in the minor leagues first but I, i'm going to tell you a little bit about his stuff here riley his fastball sat around 92 in college but he was touching 98 in bullpen sessions this fall and his slider has some very good sweep to it and the changeup it looks like a fastball out of the hand which is kind of what you want to do with your changeup you want to disguise it make it look like your fastball and get players ahead of it so he's probably on the ricky tiedemann timeline to success i'd say but he might be a year or two behind him so I think he's well on his way. He's going to be there, but this is not a guy we're going to see this year, but it's a guy, hey, Blue Jays fans, we can dream on this. Let's see how he does when he gets to Vancouver or he gets to Dunedin this year and see what numbers he puts up. If he's dominating like I think he can, it'll be an exciting guy to cheer for. Yeah, Barry Era is um, a, like a really good, um, you know, not a diamond in the rough guy by any means, but a very valuable piece to this organization. I think probably more valuable than people give him credit for. 
um, because I do think he'll shine in the lower levels of the minor leagues now. And hopefully when he does make the bigger steps to, you know, double A and triple A that, um, you know, he's, you know, he's developed enough control in his movement, maybe on his pitches, because we know the velocity is going to be there, that mm-hmm. he's um, he's able to hold a spot in those rotations and, and then make it up to the big leagues. Because I can't, as good as Barry Era it could be and is, I can't see him as a guy that makes tremendous leaps, but I could definitely see him picking off spots through the organizational depth chart and, you know, earning his way onto um, a major league spot for years to come. He will be an exciting guy to watch for, too, as we get going on here. I'm excited for him. Riley, let's talk about another guy who last year when we did our episode, he was on the top 100 of a prospect list, but he's not this year. He's kind of fallen off. So we got to get your take on this guy. And uh, Jays fans know him well. It's Orelvis Martinez. He plays shortstop slash third base. He was signed as an international free agent in 2018. He's six foot one, 200 pounds, Riley. And we talked last year when we did our prospects list that the Jays were being very aggressive with this guy's placement. He was 20 years old and we sent him all the way to New Hampshire. He was the youngest position player in New Hampshire by quite a large margin too, right? Now there was some good and there was some bad with the year. The Jays really challenged him. So they wanted to see how he would handle this thing, right? Well, he had some good and some bad. Good, Riley? The power is real with Aurelvis Martinez. He had 30 home runs in 118 games. Like that power clip, is legit. It's very hard to do. And the only other two players in double A who hit 30 home runs last year, one was 24, one was 28. Or Elvis Martinez did this as a 20 year old. So that's the good. The bad, um, he did make some pretty poor swing decisions. There was a lot of strikeouts in that game. You know, he found he was swinging and missing at a lot of curveballs down low in the zone. And he had a strikeout rate of 28.5%. That's a problem. Pitchers can find that hole in your swing and they can go out of it. So he's going to have to make better swing decisions. But there is the case too. Maybe he got a little unlucky. The Babbitt, which we talked about, was very low. His OPS was only 732. But the club, the Blue Jays' internal metrics probably had him closer to an 875 OPS. So a lot of variance here with Aurelvis Martinez. So Riley, what's your take on this guy? I mean, first thing that jumps off the page, obviously, Jesse, is the power tool that Aralvis Martinez has is real. If you were to say, you know, one thing all the greatest position players have in common, um, what is it, Jesse? And that's probably that they hit for power. Mm -hmm. I mean, from since the dawn of baseball, I think power for a position player is the most effective tool. It's easy for those guys to take over games and to be, you know, superstar players, MVPs, if you will. Um, I'm not saying Ralvis Martinez is in any shape, you know, to win an MVP, but he's definitely, and he, well, he's already played. Um, he's already got his small cup of coffee, a sampler dish, if you will, of the taste of major league baseball. And um, I, I predict this, see him again at some point this guy has you know good infield tools not great i'd like to see him with i mean you can't change his speed he's not an elite base stealer yeah, he's I, athletic enough to make plays on short and third base but nothing gonna that's gonna third. get you yeah nothing that's gonna get you you know unreal defensive numbers but yeah the swing and miss that's definitely a cause for uh, call for concern. I mean, I do like the, you know, that some players in this game, you know, taking the Adam Dunn approach, which yes. is either striking out or hitting a home run. I mean, that's the way baseball is a lot nowadays is, um, you know, you get high strikeouts and high home run rates and I'm almost fine with that. But if you're able to just kind of refurbish your contact tool a little bit more and maybe, you know, put the ball in play a little bit more. That's certainly going to help with your numbers. And, um, but yeah, 30 home runs out of a 20 year old is, I mean, that's special, man. You got a special guy with Ravis Martinez and that's why I, I can just imagine you're going to see him in some big league uh, games this year. My comp for him has always been uh, Miguel Tejada, who was a big shortstop for Oakland and for Baltimore in the mid 2000s. And that's kind of the type of player I think uh, Orelvis Martinez could turn into. And I think just, you know, another year at double A is going to be good for him. He's still going to be quite young, 21. He's going to get used to those pitching and watch for it early in the season because things like strikeout rate tend to stabilize pretty early in the year. If you see that number going down and he's still hitting with that power numbers, then you could see him as an impact piece here with the Toronto Blue Jays, if not this season probably in the next year's coming up. But I've always said, Riley, and I'll say it again. Once you're in double A, you're a stone's throw away from the big leagues. Like you're one injury away. You're one call up from being up there. So let's keep an eye on this guy early in the year. 
Yeah, he's a he's a special guy. He's got good tools. I love the Miguel Tejada uh, comp, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, he has got MVP votes in his life. Whether he's he has, won an MVP, yeah. it escapes me. Okay, so he has. So that's, uh, that's a very good comp. That's a lot to live up to. But I believe that there's a good chance that um, if he can kind of hone in and develop a little more contact at the plate that he could be a very effective infielder for the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, next guy on this list is a guy who's a little older as a prospect and a guy we are likely going to see with the Toronto Blue Jays this year, and that is Yasver Zuleta. Riley, I don't know if you remember a few years ago, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but he came into a spring training game and he looked electric. His fastball hit over 100 miles per hour. Some scouts say it's between Nate Pearson and this guy who have the best fastball in the Blue Jay system, and he's got that hammer curveball, which you love to see, right? He does flash a changeup as well, and although his stat line last year was a 372 ERA, you know, which isn't that great, um, but he did have 88 strikeouts over 55 innings pitch, and he did battle some command issues, which is what most hard-throwing relief-type prospects do have. The thing is with this guy too, Riley, he's 25 years old, and he's still a prospect, but he hasn't pitched a lot. So he's 25 years old without that many innings on him because remember, in 2020, with the COVID year, there were no minor leagues, so he didn't get to pitch. He had Tommy John the year before that, so he couldn't really pitch again then either right so this is kind of his first big year in here and even last year he battled some knee and shoulder issues which had him on the il so i think he's one of those guys when he is healthy he can put up monster stuff it's just a question of getting those reps and getting the thing in there but he's 25 if he shows he can do it in buffalo he should be in the big league bullpen at some point this year and i totally agree with you jesse zuleta is a guy who could potentially at some point mm-hmm. you talk about that hammer curveball. You, uh, the good velocity is there. Um, 25 doesn't, you know, a jump out. Obviously it's th- for a, for a ball player to be young and come up to the major leagues. Those are just to get your stats, you know, to possibly be able to get a chance at the record books. That's what, what I think about that. If you come in the big leagues at age 25 or 26 and as a starting pitcher and you have a chance to go on, um, you know, get your, get your six years in, get your six, seven years in as a major mm-hmm. league player. And I believe Zuleta could do that. Um, another guy from our international prospect pool of many, good players. This happens to be a pitcher that I believe will probably see some bullpen time this year. I can imagine we have a plethora of arms and I don't want him to jump up any spots ahead of the already guys, maybe a Zach pop or, um, you know, any other um, younger relief pitchers that we have. I mean, Zuleta, obviously the idea would have him to be starting games, but that's a, that's a bit of a future away. I, I think, Um, but I would still like to see him get some time in and have a couple innings at some point. Obviously this is a guy who is going to start in um, our top two systems. And Mm -hmm. I think he's going to, I think he's going to rip it up in, um, in triple a, Yeah, I think the Jays are actually going to send this guy to Buffalo and they might actually have him pitching in the starting rotation. And if this was like the 2017, 2018 Jays team, which we were quite bad, then I would have been all for this. Let him develop as a starter, see what we can do. But the Jays team now is ready to win and we kind of need a guy like this in our bullpen. And I kind of hope that's where the Jays end up putting this guy is into our bullpen because a 100 mile power fastball out of the pen is going to be awesome. He could be like an ex-Jordan Romano, right? If everything goes well. My comp for him, Riley, Jason Grilly who was a lower former Blue Jay and a longtime Pittsburgh Pirate. I think if everything goes well with that hammer off speed pitch and the good fastball, that's kind of how I see Osver Zuleta turning into. Yeah, obviously that's, I mean, hey, when you could touch triple digits, I mean, obviously it's a lot more common nowadays than it was mm-hmm. in the past, but um, definitely a powerful right-handed pitcher is I, I believe I, I believe that the best pitchers in baseball history have been right-handed hard throwers. So again, when you talk about the comps, I mean, Jason Grilly might be selling it down a little bit to could, what he yeah. possibly could be. Uh, hey, not a lot is known on this guy because he hasn't put in the time, like really hasn't put in the time yet. There's, I mean, he could be he could be an absolute bust this year. There's still that possibility, but I'm dreaming of a good year in AAA for this guy, and I. I can just imagine some innings from um, the bullpen in the major leagues, but yeah, he's, he's again, a guy who needs to really show us in the coaches and, and in, uh, in Buffalo and in Toronto that, that he can, he can do that. I mean, 25 years old, um, even if it's less experienced. So you kind of want to move a guy up the ladder. That's, you know, at the age 25, yeah, that's y- kind you of, you got to see what you got from him, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of sink or I sink or swim for him, and hopefully this guy can swim in because he would be a great piece for this team. All right, and the last guy, the last main guy I want to touch on here, and this Riley, this guy like Brandon Barriera is probably the furthest away on our team, but that is Tucker Tolman, Riley. And you know how much I love upside. Tucker Tolman is oozing with upside. He was a second round pick last year. He's probably going to play shortstop or third base. You know, his arm strength isn't the best, so some scouts think he might end up at second base on the be- uh, later in his career. But he's six foot one, one hundred and ninety pounds. Riley and he's a switch hitter so I know you love a good switch hitter and the Jays haven't had a ton of them throughout their franchise history but the thing with him Riley is the bat and it's very projectable at that still just 19 years old and he's a long way away from the majors but he hit 289 391 368 last year in his first stint in the minors and he is your typical attitude guy kind of like Brandon Barriera he's your first guy in Last guy out, the work ethic he had has been enamored by coaches, not only with the Blue Jays, but when he was in college. And even like some of the guys, like when he was in high school and some prep programs have always talked about Tucker Tolman's bat speed and how good he can be. And I have a friend um, who's been in love with Tucker Tolman since before he was even draft eligible for years now. Like he understands his swing very well and he can barrel baseballs with ease. The upside in this hitter, Riley, could be huge for Tucker Tolman. Now, again, a long way to go. A lot can happen between now and then, but just keep your eye on Tucker Tolman, maybe being one of the future core pieces of the Toronto Blue Jays in years to come. You want to talk about switch hitting infielders? One comes to mind, and that's Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones and he was yep. never really <laughs> the best defender at the start of his career. But one thing he could do, Jesse, from both sides of the plate, Chipper Jones was he he knew his swing and he could he could hit the ball barrel a ball up mm-hmm. and yeah Tolman the thing is that's you know what sends you know your line outs to get to driving the ball over the shortstop head and you know possibly into the gap there's a long way to go Jesse and he could easily be he could easy I mean I'm not saying he will it's gonna take some it's gonna take some hard work but he could be a you know surpass um, Barriera for sure on this list at some point because he does have the makeup, especially at a, as a switch hitting infielder, which I think is very important. Um, if he could, if he could make himself out to be more of a second baseman, that'd be great. But even a switch hitting second baseman that hits for contact well on both sides of the plate and possibly could develop the power for one side of the plate, that would be very good. Good. That would make you a problem. That would set you ahead of most second basemen in the minor league, minor leagues to, to, to even start out. You know, if your arm doesn't develop, that's fine. Make sure you have at least a glove or an arm mm-hmm. um, if you're suiting up and in, in double A in the future. But I mean, yeah. This guy, if he hits the gym and can develop some power to his game, I mean, he's still very young. And I know he's probably thinking, you know, he could possibly turn into, I say, Chipper Jones now. Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer, over 400 home runs. (laughs) Uh, It's a hell of a cop, but, you know, the potential to do something like that. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to say it that he might not be him, but he's he's got a lot of the same. He's got a lot of the same features. He's he's can develop his game better defensively, hit the gym, develop his, his the throwing power, then develop his power at the plate. And he could make himself into a fine ball player. All right. I like it. Those are the top five on the Blue Jays system. I think Tucker Tolman is going to likely be a top 100 prospect at some point, as well as Brandon Barriera. Um, Riley, do you have a fa- I mean. Ricky Tiedemann's probably our favorite because he's probably got the most dominant. But do you have a favorite out of these five that you're excited to see the most? I mean, to be honest, I like it's it's hard. We've done such a good job at developing um, guys that were already within our system and developing, you know, younger guys like a Zach Pop, but and the, the trading for guys that are in bullpen. So I'm referring to is Zuleda. Yeah. Because I mean. To be honest, I feel like I feel like he might get pushed behind in our organizational depth chart um, because of the amount of good relief pitchers we have. And again, sure. I would I would be fine at throwing him into the fire, so to say, um, as being a arm, maybe even in a mop up role, or when we have a, 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 a hefty lead in a game or something like that. It would be it would just be nice to see him get some some innings this year he's definitely um i mean i definitely don't want to have a favorite my favorite players actually wear the blue to see him in a blue jays jersey this year if not next year 
All right. Well, let's, I want to talk about some other prospects of note here, guys who are close to the big leagues who will likely see in Toronto at some point this year. The first one is Addison Barger and he is likely to get some big league time with the team for what it's worth. Riley, he had a home run off Kevin Gosman during spring training last year that really caught Kevin Gosman's attention. Like it made him say, wow, like who's this kid? He started the year in high a and ended up a triple a high riser, 308, 378, 555 line with 26 home runs. And he cut down on his strikeouts at every single stop, all great things, all things you like to see. He has the Danny Jansen slash Marcus Simeon approach to hitting, get the ball out in front, put it to your pole side to get the, get the power going. The arm strength too off the charts. He could be really good. And it seems to me that if like Kevin Biggio struggles out of the gate, which we really can't rule out, it might be Addison Barger, the first man up to take that spot on the roster. Quick thought on him. No, um, another, <clears throat> another guy who um, I can't imagine is going to be um, in the club till maybe 2025 or 20 or sorry, 2024, 2025. But again, a guy with a lot of good tools. Nothing that's outstanding, Jesse. But again, a lot of middle road guys um, that are going to, you know, be very good at the minor league level. Not going to put up, you know, Kevin Biggio minor league numbers by any uh, any stretch of the imagination. But definitely guys who are going to be hey there he's gonna be he's gonna be good at the minors there's no doubt about it hey he did he had an ops over nine thousand nine hundred last year and if he keeps doing that then he will be in the big league club and who knows maybe he just never stops hitting right and maybe he turns out to run some peace so and that's when you get with jesse when you get up there and you don't stop then you're gonna stay right that's the yeah. idea man all right, just two other guys I wanted to mention. One is Spencer Horowitz, who is, you know, he's a first base only type of guy. And first base is kind of locked in on this Toronto Blue Jays team already. So he might be blocked a little bit. But there was a report from one of the Blue Jays amateur scouting directors who um, they really tried to focus the Blue Jays prospect on swing decisions. So they grade every time a single player swings. And he was asked who was the best at this in the minor leagues. And he called out Spencer Horowitz, who's been a really good decision maker. He swings at a pitch that's in the area where the expected slugging percentage is very good and takes a lot of those pitches that are strike to ball pitches, like those curveballs that start in the zone and dip down or those sliders that start in and dip away. He um, got a 75 plus grade on that. He's able to take those pitches. So Spencer Horowitz seems like one of those guys whose swing decisions are really good. And plus he's got a bit of power there. So if there ever is an injury to Brandon Belt or a guy God forbid, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. We could see some Spencer Horowitz in here. And the other guy I wanted to talk about here is uh, Gabriel Martinez, who has started the year in single A Vancouver, but was left unprotected in the rule five draft. And I'm actually kind of surprised no one took this guy. He had 324, 381, 490 across his final 113 plate appearances last year. And he's still just 20 years old. And um, he's fairly aggressive in the box which, you know, he won't have to wait long to get to double A, but he's a trendy candidate to be a fast riser and maybe one of these guys that we're talking about in the top five next year. And hey, you never know. If he continues to hit, he could be in a big league club as a September call-up this year. So Spencer Horowitz, Gabriel Martinez, Riley, quick thought on one of those. Uh, definitely Horowitz. Um, you talk about a guy that has a good eye up on the plate mix with power. I think that's important, man. He's going to be a guy who's, who's going to crush some, crush some pitches this year, um, in the minor leagues. And, um, yeah, you hope that nothing goes wrong on the injury front for the major league level, but I feel like Horowitz is a guy that could step up if he was needed to, as far as Martinez goes a little bit farther down the list, but of course, of of course, a guy with eye popping numbers as of late, you always want to kind of go off your most recent numbers. And when the Mm -hmm. numbers you read are like that for Martinez, I mean, you hope he starts off his, his year hot and continues that same stretch because you could easily see him move up the charts as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Riley, you and I have done through the rest of the list. These are the big main guys, the guys, those are the names you need to know, but I want you to give me one or two names that, Hey, maybe Jay's fans aren't thinking of that could be a surprise of moving up prospects charts this year. What you got? I got, um, I got outfielder Desan Brown actually is my mm-hmm. first guy. This guy was acquired in our, draft in 2019 he's ranked 17th for us last year he's ranked 38th for us in our system this is a guy who's only really seen a A ball this isn't a guy who's anywhere you know he hasn't touched double a he hasn't touched triple a yet but there's a guy and i like i like jesse that you know the 80 20 to 80 scales is a guy with 80 speed which is elite obviously yeah that's so when you when you start off with that sort of athleticism and if if the Son Brown can play 
middle of the road defense, if he can play serviceable average defense as an outfielder and develop his contact tool better, I think that Desan Brown could be a big league outfielder and possibly, you know, not a guy who is, I mean, to say he might be a leadoff hitter, he has at at his very best, you know, potential, he will be a leadoff hitter as a major league player. I believe he could be a very effective bottom of the order guy, a guy who could play a lot of good small ball for you. And I like small ball, the stealing mm-hmm. bases. Maybe I know Jesse hates bunts, but this is <laughs> a guy who could possibly bunt for you. <laughs> but of course, Jesse, you want to see you, hey, you want to see him develop his contact tool. Desan Brown has a lot of upside. This is a guy who is not going to hit for power, but this is almost, I'm not going to say he's a Juan Pierre comp, but he's someone around the same nature where he is all contact, you know, not a lot of power and a tremendous foot speed. And if he can put it together and, you know, and can play at best wherever he goes, a, a average or above average defense, that would be perfect. Um, the other guy's an old well, name. Before this you go on him, Ronnie, I do want to add past, about. I yeah. do want to add something about Desan Brown here. He is the type of guy too that you want on every playoff roster. A guy who's got speed who could steal you a base just like that. Like we've seen Terrence Gore hang on to playoff rosters for a long time. So Desan Brown could be that type of guy. If the Jays are going to the playoffs and Desan Brown isn't in the major leagues, they might just call him up, put him on the bench, just so he could be a pinch runner, steal a base guy. I like that comp there. Now go on to your next guy. Yes. So as I was saying, this guy is an old name. This is a 2018 round or uh, I, I believe first or second round pick. He was picked in the first two rounds, Adam Klopfenstein, and okay. he has fallen to 44th on our list. Now, Jesse, mm-hmm. we talked before the show and you wanted you said, now, Riley, why? I mean, this is a guy who used to throw 98. Yeah. Why all of a sudden do you, do you select him? And now he's throwing in the lower 90s. And I believe that this could be a great bounce back year for him. Okay. Um, he, this is a guy, if he could turn himself into a different type of pitcher, obviously big body and velocity as a right-hander is number one. But as we're seeing and what's working for the Blue Jays and guys like we've got Chris Bassett and um, Kevin Gosman, um, you know, not saying that Klopfenstein will be one of those guys but could possibly be a number four or five pitcher in the future or a long guy out of the pen. Adam Klopfenstein could do a, a could do a, himself a justice and develop his secondary pitches like a sinking fastball or a cutter, working on the command for those and placing them low in the zone. Be very effective for him. We know he's not going to blow away hitters with 96, 97, or 98. But to throw 90, low 90s and get a good cutter across or get a good sinker, we know that that pitch with the defense that we've put around our major league team or, you know, in the minor league system, we could get him some, you know, we could get him some ground outs. We could, you know, limit his pitch count that way. He could go later into games or he could get you out of jams in different situations. He's obviously some sort of specialist that way because he's not going to be the fireballer that he once was maybe projected to be. You know, I will say when we drafted Adam Poffenstein back in 2018, he was supposed to be this high school, this toolsy guy coming out of Texas. Like, I think a lot of people really like the guy, but you never like to see these guys whose numbers just kind of struggle and they dip. And not only that, he's losing stuff too. like, not only was his ERA over five, he also walked 55 batters last year, but for what it's worth, you know, there is still glimpses of upside. Like the guy had it once he can get it again. Right. And if he can learn how to adjust himself into like that role where he's saying he's throws more of a sinker and he can be a kitchen sink type of guy. There is something here. You just, you need something to spark with him. And once this guy's had this upside, you know, he can get it back. It's just, he's got to find that spark. So maybe the Blue Jays coaches can do that with him. But remember, still just 22 years old, still got some development time in front of him. We'll see how this guy goes. Um, Riley, my two guys I wanted to mention, the first one here is Zach Britton, who will also be playing for this team in spring training. He looked awesome in the Arizona Fall League. Some people described him as the toughest guy to get out in the whole league. So he's a guy who we could be seeing at some point this year. Keep an eye on him this spring. And the other one is Adrian Pinto. He was a guy we got in the Randall Kritchik, uh, Rymal Tapia trade. Good speed, good defense guy, a guy who does all the little things well. And if the bat ever comes around, he could be a real impact piece for those guys. So those are two names I want Jays fans to listen to as we go for and remember them as we go on. A lot of big names, Jesse. Not sorry, <laughs> not big names. Um, as most most people who watch our show, I know, are big into baseball. If you're not really in, remember those names. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was about there was about eight or nine good ones. If you if you do remember them, that's great. If you're a baseball um, connoisseur and a nut like us, I mean, 
let us know down in the comments what you Please, guys yes. think. I mean, um, I mean, Kloff, Kloff and Steen, obviously this, there's a low, there's a low percentage that he's going to ever make the big leagues. And he's taken a lot of, um, steps back. There's also names we didn't mention on the list. And if you're screaming at your phone or screaming at your computer, <laughs> we apologize <laughs> to go through 50 names is very hard, but obviously the big ones to take away have already been mentioned. I feel like we have a good top five. And again, to have us ranked less than 24th, I think is a bit criminal. To have us ranked around 21st, 20th, I think does its justice. But remember, folks, we're, we have a team that's going to, you know, compete for a championship this year. And, you know, we have a tough division to play in. I've always considered the American League East to be the toughest division in all of mm -hmm. baseball. And, I mean, we got up. We had to make the necessary transactions. And I believe it's, it's obviously for the best, Jesse, but when our top – prospects are two great left-handed pitchers with a lot of upside still super happy about that man obviously and some position players with elite speed we got pitch recognition we got power athleticism still all over the board man we're in no way a sinking ship um you know in our minor leagues so jesse a lot of good things to take away still you know just invites for spring training man there's a lot to look forward to man with seeing these young guys up um you know in basically a very short time away my friend hey, we're into early february now and it's kind of appropriate well it's nice and snowy outside that we're sitting here we're dreaming of what could be on the baseball diamond this summer i'm looking forward to it but riley we probably buried the lead a little bit the blue jays did make a transaction here and we're 45 minutes into our episode and now we're going to finally talk about chad green which is actually a very high impact move i think the blue jays made and i don't know about you man but i am a big fan of this deal the contract is essentially Two years, 8.5 million, but there's a lot of complicated options that go through it here, right? And he underwent Tommy John surgery back in June, so he won't be able to pitch for the club to the second half. But Riley, we've seen Chad Green a lot. He's pitched for the Yankees. We kind of know what he is. That fastball, very elite. In fact, since 2017, his fastball has been one of the best in the game, better than guys like Zach Wheeler, Max Scherzer, you know, like a very good fastball out of Chad Green. And think about this Blue Jays team come trade deadline season, right? More than likely, we're going to be looking for another reliever in our bullpen because we always need more relievers. Chad Green is going to be the type of guy you'd want to try to acquire in a trade. So I think it's a great piece of business. Let's get this guy now so we don't have to worry about it. So it'll already be a boost for the second half of our season. Riley, what are your thoughts on the Chad Green signing here? First of all, Jesse, I want to I want to say that you want to talk about 29 other teams passing on something, you know, as opposed to the 22 or whatever. I can't believe Jad, Chad Green um, was still available, first of mm -hmm. all, because this is a pitcher that, yes, we've seen a lot of this guy throws gas. He's not an overpowering looking fella on the mound. He's very, you know, very baseball player, you know, looking like he just, he's, he's not a huge dude, but he throws absolute gas. And this is a guy who's, I believe his career strikeout rate is tremendous. His case mm -hmm. per nine. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, and, and Hey, and what I've seen him, I feel like he doesn't give up the free pass a lot. Uh, maybe prone to the long ball, perhaps your typical relief kind of yep. stats, man. Yep. Um, I mean, there was, I don't think, you know, turn back the clock two or three years. I think that's when he was at his best, obviously as a pit, as you know, pitchers, when they come across this and they have huge regressions, um, it's either, you know, it's either you falter or you pick right back up where you left off. And I hope that Chad green can slide in when he's healthy and be a big part of this rotation. Cause it is a huge Huge acquisition, man. I mean, this guy could be absolutely lights out. I've referred to Swanson being our setup guy uh, in Garcia. But when you're talking about Chad Green, too, if Chad Green can do what he has done in years past, I mean, I, I would also be crazy not to think that at some points – he has pitched like Jordan Romano um, mm -hmm. when He's he was times. the Yankees yep. closer. He is just that kind of pitcher, man. And we wanted to add velocity to this bullpen. We did not have guys that threw 97, 98. Now we have that guy. It sucks that we have to wait for his return. But I absolutely love this deal. I, again, I don't, it just, we have now almost too many good things and we wanted to add pitching. And I feel like we've absolutely loaded up on relief pitchers, man. I think that's very important. We, I thought we did okay. We had an okay bullpen last year with some guys that definitely overperformed, uh, you know, talking about guys like Garcia, perhaps, uh, but now 
I mean, Garcia, I don't think, I hope he is as good as he was last year, but he almost doesn't have to be as good with the likes of Swanson coming in and with the likes of when Chad Green returns. I mean, that's a big move, man. It is a, I, I mean, I know that Blue Jays Twitter um, thinks that this is an impactful trade. If you don't think it's impactful, um, you obviously haven't seen Chad Green pitch or just don't really, I, I don't really like the Yankees either, but if we're going to take away <laughs> anything from it, it's that relief pitchers are a dime a dozen. They flip over. He pitched for the Yankees for a long time. He's returned to an American Le- League East club. And I'm super, I'm super happy to have a man because he's going to be, when he comes, he's going to be very, very good for us. Yeah, career numbers at Rogers Center too. 30 strikeouts and only one walk at all of his times pitched at Rogers Center. So uh, that is quite good. Now, a lot of that came against the bad 2017 to 2019 Blue Jays, but hey, it's all the same. The numbers don't lie, right? So very excited <laughs> about that there, yeah. Very good. And I've always liked that the Jays, I thought the Jays should have gone after those Tommy John guys more. Drew Pomeranz, Garrett Richards are guys that came to mind. It's like, I don't know why the Jays never did that. So I always like that they did that here. And um, he apparently he had about 20 to 25 teams interested in his service, but the Blue Jays were on him from the start of the offseason, it seemed like. So they really wanted Chad Green, and I think they got it. And the contract, Riley, here's what I want to go on here. And I've never seen a contract like this before in all of Major League Baseball. So Chad Green in the 2023 season is going to make $2.25 million, okay? So at the end of the season, the Jays have a club option. If the Blue Jays say yes, we will have Chad Green under contract until 2026. If the Blue Jays decline that option, then Chad Green gets a player option. If Chad Green says no, um, I don't remember whatever. Oh, the Blue Jays get another option after that. If Chad Green says yes to that player option, he will be a Blue Jay through the 2024 season. If it's no, the Blue Jays receive a two-year team option again. If the Jays accept that, he'll be on the team until 2025. If the Jays decline that, he'll be a free agent after this year. So it's like layers, Riley, of options, options, options. All we know is Chad Green is a free agent this year and likely at least one more year after this with the potential of it being all the way till 2026. Yeah, I'm going to, when we play, when I watch this video, we're going to, I'm going to have to replay that yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly confusing. What you, hey man, I don't do business, the business side of baseball, but I can tell you from the business side of baseball that whenever I play MLB The Show 22 and I find him as an available free agent, I sign this guy because he's an easy guy to pitch with. He strikes out a lot of guys. Again, right-hander, a lot of velocity, man. A lot of swing and miss um, from the batters that he faces. I mean, it's a – it's. I mean, yeah, the contract's a little complicated, but if he performs, like, what the hell does it matter, right? Absolutely. I'm excited to see it in the pen. Um, follow us on TikTok and on Twitter for more information on Chad Green there. Um, some news and notes, Riley. Jazz Chisholm will be on the cover of MLB The Show 23. It's a game I'm probably going to get, and uh, interesting choice for Jazz Chisholm, but hey, he's a, a flair guy, you know, a guy who's kind of fun around the game of baseball, so I understand why they did it there. Uh, Jesse Barfield and Rich Harden were elected to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Jesse Barfield, longtime Blue Jay, Rick Hard- Rich Harden, Canadian kid, longtime Oakland Day. Uh, congratulations to the both of them. And also congratulations to Anthony Bass and his wife, Sydney, who are expecting a child, and they will have that coming at some point in August, so congrats to them, Riley. Any takeaways on the news and notes? Yes, of course. MLB the show. I do like. Hey, I love the the how MLB is selling um, the game. I I, you know, love the double cover with the Jeter on the Legends edition. I think that's cool. I think that Chaz, Jazz Chisholm. Hey, do do you give the thumbs down, Derek? G, yeah, Derek boo. Jeter is a guy who. We're trying to sell the game here. Yes, up in Canada, we have to poo them, but you can't tell me that. Uh, I mean, millions of people are going to buy that just because of him. Of course. If you want to, if you, I mean, we're looking to sell the sport here. Obviously, we'll crap on any. I mean, we. I mean, we crap on the the Yankees here. Not all the time. We could crap on them more today, but we won't. I will hold my tongue in a later <laughs> day. We'll talk about what we were going to talk about, perhaps. But I love, I love the. Um, I love how we're selling MLB, and obviously MLB The Show is going to be great. Yes, Jesse Barfield, part of that, I mean, one of the best outfield, if not the best outfield that oh, we've yeah. had with uh, with Mose, with Mosby and Bell. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's big, man. And, um, yeah, one of my guys, Rich Harden, longtime Oakland Day, good Canadian boy, a good pitcher. Yeah, we were talking before, Jesse, and we'll get into, you know, a slight thing on the World Baseball Classics, remembering him from the 2006 I believe World Baseball Classic team with yep. guys like Justin Morneau and Jason Bay, a couple other good Canadian names out there. But um, yeah, and of course, 
Anthony Bass, congratulations to you and the missus. And I hope that you have a, uh, a healthy smallmouth bass, if you will. <laughs> Love that. Absolutely. Um, just some more news and notes, Riley. This has stuff to do with the Renaults. There's a thing going around Twitter. And, uh, you know, we're kind of excited about the new areas they have on there, right? The new bars that are going to be in the right center field, like the Corona Lounge or whatever. And there's going to be a terrace and there's going to be... Where I usually like to sit and when I go to Jays games, I really like that right field right behind the visitor's bullpen. Section 104, 105 were always places I really like to sit. But they are now changing that into like a mezzanine area. And my thought when they were building this is that you will be able just to buy your ticket. And if I wanted to go have a beer in that area, like I should be able to. I should be able just to go walk around, go in there and chill. But apparently what the Blue Jays are doing which I, I hate, but I'll, I'll let you get your thought on it, is that they are selling out those areas for the right to be reserved. So you can bring a group of like 30, 40 people and reserve those areas for your group, right? So if you and I are going to a Jays game and there's somebody else who's got that 100 level mezzanine reserved, we can't go there. We have to be part of the group to do it. And like, it's very expensive in what it's going to be. I know the bars in the 200 level are between 55 and 104 bucks. The 200 level Terrence are going to be between 90 and 125. The mezzanine, which I was talking about, 205 to $280 a ticket if you want to bring a group to the game. And the one that really cheeses me, Riley, one of the best parts at Rogers Center, especially for young guys like you and me, is the WestJet flight deck. It was always so fun to go there in the standing room and watch the Jays games now. Now that area is being booked out as a group site, and we will not be able to go unless they're, you're part of a group that's there. And I think that's a major fail for the Toronto Blue Jays. I, I, it, it really grinds my gears. What's your take on this here? Yeah, I mean, I'm a guy who is just, I'm I'm a guy who's angry at the world for, you know, <laughs> um, for for things that require, um, you know, a lot of uh, when rich people get to, you know, do stuff like that. And I'm yeah. rich people, but, you know, you kind of miss out on things like that. And now that you kind of were able to do something like go to the wet West jet flight deck and takes away from the capacity and good, se good seats that you used to pay good money for now, you know, even less because they're not even ballpark seats. And mm -hmm. yeah, you can kind of have this social. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not about going to the baseball games and having a big social gathering, having a picnic with my friends and drinking craft beer and sitting around and, ooh, ooh, yes, a baseball. Oh, no. <laughs> no, man. I'm sitting my ass in a seat. Sure, I'm yes. getting a beer. I'm getting a hot dog and I'm watching the damn game. I'm not having a visitation about it. You know, I'm having sitting with probably you and, and whoever else I'm around mm -hmm. and I'm watching the damn game. We'll do our lap around the stadium first and, and, you know, decked out in our blues and stuff. I don't know, man. You know, they've already jumped the price up on whatever, but whoever the guys are at the top of the hill, they decided they decided this trying to milk a little more money out of the fans. That's, that's all it is. Not too, gonna, right? dude, it's, no, it's not, it's not going to change my, me, my tone at all though. Still, I'm going to go about it the exact same same way man i wasn't someone who was a we you're a west jetter flight guy i never really sat around there anyways mm -hmm. i usually do my one or two, one lap i was gonna say one or two it's definitely not a two lap around it's definitely a one lap <laughs> and then then get my provisions and go find my seat but yeah doesn't really affect me but for the people i know that enjoy stuff like that i hate it for them man i hate it for them yeah, that's the thing. Like, not every fan is like us, Riley, getting diehard into watching the game, breaking, like, sweating and with every single pitch that is thrown, right, and every single swing. There are some people who are just there for the summer, for the experience and stuff, and this sucks for them that you can only get it if you're going with the group, and I feel for them, but... Uh... That's going to do it for episode here today, guys. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Prospects, a little off the beaten course. We don't talk a lot of prospects here, so it's uh, it's kind of nice to get our spot on some names to remember as we look to the future of the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, remember, again, please hit that like button on the way out if you're watching us on YouTube, and please subscribe to the channel. We are eight away from 200. Quite a rise because we were celebrating 100, which felt like just a few months ago, so we are well on the rise. I like to say we're the fastest rising Toronto Blue Jays podcast, so uh, put your money where your mouth is, and let's see where that's going here, Riley. Anything else to add before we call it a day today? Well, we could be the fastest rising. I don't know, man. We covered a lot last year. Same yep. thing this year. We went through our position players. We got our pitchers. We do prospects. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course, if you if anyone wants to join in our discussion, Buds and Jays, Twitter, you know, yep. our YouTube, YouTube, if you're there. I like to read the comments if you have some, uh, you know, some some good things to say about our prospects or some not good things to say. If you agree, disagree, who knows? 
I mean, you're here because you like the Jays, obviously, or you're one of our family members. We don't really know, but yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, we got, we got to go through at some point, like we said, it's February. I don't even know what day it is. February 5th is the day, Jesse, yeah, February yes it is. 5th. I mean, we're, we're right close to spring trading, man. And you mm-hmm. know, right after that, like baseball is just around the corner, man. As I feel Christmas was almost just yesterday. Baseball feels like it's tomorrow, man. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it because this is the, the makeup of this team as similar to it as it was last year. There are so many changes and I feel like it's, it's definitely for the best man. All right. Well, we'll see everyone next week and who knows what we're going to talk about. Maybe we get some breaking news or something, but it'll be that much closer. We'll see you guys again. Again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again then. Thanks guys. 